This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. I always love starting off the show with things like we're going to start the show with this morning. But I was thinking, do you guys remember who that was? I think it was a bit, and they were they were pretending to be Ray Charles, one mm-hmm. of the greatest of all time, no question. Uh, but they they took the song. Well, he did it like this. So so you do the national anthem, will it be the greatest? The guy goes, Oh, I said, Oh, can you see? I said, can you see? And he just kept doing it <laughs> over and over and over. The thing took like about 45 minutes. It was hilarious. I don't remember where that was. That was very, very funny. And the rocket's red glare. Yes, I said glare. <laughs> oh, God. Well, we're at it again, ladies and gentlemen. Someone that works for Major League Baseball decided that Ingrid Andrus, none of the three of us even know who she is, so do you think she's a country singer? Uh, yeah, from what I've been able to research, allegedly she is a country musician. Allegedly. Allegedly, <laughs> yes. yes. A birdie, birdie is that that guy kind of stuff? Yes, you have the old country western. West, country western. Uh, they decided that Ingrid Andres uh, should sing the national anthem at the home run derby last night, and that someone might no longer have a job today. We don't know for sure, but just a guess. The song starts off decent. But the second half was a feverish, I'm sorry, I couldn't get through that. Okay. But the second half was a feverish nightmare. (laughs) That's not exactly a compliment. Uh, The players could barely keep it together listening on the field. To put it in perspective, it was so bad that Fergie is now trending. You're going to need to hear this to believe it. Now, you guys have heard a little bit of it. Yes. Uh, Do you remember the Fergie one? Tom, by chance, no. I think hers was an NBA game, and I have both of them ready. Okay. Oh, you do. So, hers, so. hers was an NBA game, and all the players were on the court, literally laughing at her. Yeah. Like so. So this is this is Ingrid Andress last night before <clears throat> the MLB Home Run Derby. Who's broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the red. So uh oh. They're showing players laughing now. Oh, Ingrid. All right. And then this uh, is this is get hurt. <laughs> you, right. Uh, this is before the 2020 NBA All-Star game. So this is, believe it or not, pre-COVID. Jeez. Really? Pre-COVID. Fergie. Uh, maybe caused it with this. Oh, say, can you see? What? A little, a little jazz rendition. Yeah, a little jazz <laughs> rendition of the national anthem. What's so Oh. The thing is, she's not a bad vocalist normally. Yeah. Just. Right. Last. I don't know what. Just this style does not fit the national anthem. No. Chance, you know, now they're showing celebrities in the crowd, and they're all starting like in a spike or in on their feet. <laughs> it sounds like she's trying to do a Amy Winehouse impersonation. Oh, missed the note. Trying to think where it, I'm gonna skip ahead just a little bit here, okay? Yep. <laughs> Bring it on home, Fergie. 
Now everybody's just laughing uh, on the cameras. It's the oh. band. No, ra, 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 ra. Yeah, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Two vocalists of the first of order time. of all yeah. time. Yes, Two vocalists of all time. Of all time. No yes. question. You know, one thing I did love about Ray Charles when he did the national anthem, because mm -hmm. he always did, you guys are probably too young to remember a lot about Ray Charles, one of the greatest writers and singers of all time. Mm -hmm. He was blind. I think he was blind from birth, too, if I remember correctly. But whenever he sang anything, he would do this. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, oh, no, like see, mm -hmm. can you see? He'd be bobbing his head back and forth. God, that that was horrible. Both of those were horrible. Yeah, and I'm sure, like Fergie, I know is actually like a good singer when she's singing her own music, and I'm sure Ingrid does a great job as well. But yeah, the nerves definitely got to them, and the national yeah. anthem was definitely butchered. I'm going to redo the national anthem, F. Scott Fitzgerald or Francis Scott Key or whatever the hell his name yeah. was. Yep. Was it Francis Scott <laughs> yeah, Key? Francis Scott. Yeah. Who's F. Scott Fitzgerald? That's I a forgot. ship. He, no, he wrote The Great Gatsby. Oh, oh The Great Gatsby. Gatsby. <laughs> that's right. There you go. Okay. That was close. <laughs> hey, I'll F all of them. Let yeah. me just put it that way. F. Scott and F. You. How yeah. about that? But in any case, yeah, I I don't know. Did he really write that song on board a battleship? Because that was the word. I like to believe so. Yeah. Be, but, I mean, who knows? Yeah. Knowing what I know now as an adult, that was probably made up, too. And he wrote it in the safety of his own home. Probably true. But it's only the national anthem. Why should we have a good one? You know what I mean? Well, and ours is literally, or usually known as the most difficult of all the yeah. national anthems. Yeah. I don't know if that's just because we're Americans and we claim it to be that way. But they always say that it's musically the most difficult to sing. So. You know, they should just cancel the home run derby now, don't you think? After that, just don't do it anymore. What do you say? Everybody go home. <laughs> Tickets refunded. So who won the home run derby? Does anybody know? Uh, yeah, uh, Teoscar Hernandez from the Dodgers. Oh, the Dodgers? Why is it always the Dodgers? He just recently, I think he just recently signed with them last year or the year or this year or the year before. He used to be with the Blue Jays for a long time. What's that guy's name that just signed for like $750 million or some damn thing? Uh, uh, Shohei Otani. Shohei Otani. Mm -hmm. There you go. That guy is incredibly talented. Yeah, super good. I mean, like a good pitcher, a good fielder, a good hitter. He get, he does everything. Yeah, he's, I mean, arguably the best pitcher and the best yeah, hitter. Right. And he's like, I'll just take two spots, one person, give me both contracts. Yeah, let's have a day. Unbelievable. I mean, the guy is, I don't think anybody, even the biggest prick in the world can say, oh, he's not that good. Yeah, he is. I mean, you can't deny it this round. You know, everybody else, you always got somebody I go, oh, he's okay, I guess. It's like, mm -hmm. no, how do you know, first of all? <laughs> yeah, it stinks that he had to have, sur he had surgery before this year for Tommy John, so he hasn't mm -hmm. been able to pitch it all this year. But he, Oh, really? Yeah, but he's been hitting the ball well. So they're aiming for maybe... Uh, towards the, like the playoffs here where he really starts getting ramped up to like throwing again, but probably he'll be ready for opening day next year. Did they educate him on the gambling issue in the major leagues? Yes. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. His interpreter, did he end up going to jail for yeah. an extended period of time? And yeah. Yeah. So thanks a lot. Otani. Uh, you do it and I get to go to prison. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Well, you need the money to keep rolling in if that guy wants to keep gambling. So no, that's true. It's a good point. We shall take a break. Be right back in a couple of minutes. Judd Zolgad will join us from Score North. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. I said expert. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours too, as a matter of fact. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market, the economy. He knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation 48-minute evaluation. you got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh. His number is 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance, no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. 
All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. I am a paid endorser. When you need someone to listen to, a lawyer you know and trust. If you've never been in an auto accident, it's hard to know what to expect from the insurance adjuster. Here are some tips. One, if they taught you about whether or not you should hire a lawyer, it's a good sign that you probably should. Two, it's illegal for them to give you any legal advice. They aren't lawyers and they aren't licensed to practice law. Three, if they tell you that everyone involved in the accident is at fault, they're wrong. This comes from the belief that you're at fault for just being on the road. That's nonsense and not supported by any law. Finally, remember that friendly adjusters are often just gaining information. They want you to do most of the talking so they can file their report. I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. I hope you're never injured in a collision. But if you are, don't sign anything until you've talked to us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. Yeah, baby. I just got an email from somebody. Star mangled banner. Oh, really? <laughs> no, boy. Did you come up with that one, did you? Mike Lindell and my pillow employees want to thank my listeners for all of your continued support. And to thank you, they're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever when you use promo code TOM and you get free shipping on your entire order. Get 50% off the my pillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six pack towel sets, only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses and mattress toppers. 100% made in the USA, on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything's on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually do absorb dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM and you get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146 or go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, and now with the National Anthem, here's Judd Zolgad. How about that? Jesus, Palomino. What was, do, do we have any explanation for what happened there? I, I don't, do they try to get real jazzy with it or what is that? I, it's awful. I, I mean, it's up there, you know, with. Roseanne Barr and what was it? Fergie did one. Yeah. At, at the best of all time would never be topped, of course, is the basketball game. Carl Lewis singing that. Oh, oh God. I, yep. I've will seen never that. be topped. Yep. Oh, well, I guess what are you going to You got to give everybody their shot. Do you think it was nerves, though? Do you think? It's got to be. Because if you're a professional singer, that's, you're, I mean, it, that's the only explanation. Like you're not a bad singer. Otherwise you wouldn't have been asked to do the national anthem in the first place. So you, it's gotta be just the nerves, maybe a little bit too big of a stage is the home run derby for Miss Ingress. Does anybody watch the home run derby? No, I don't think I've ever watched it. Like who the hell cares? Who's the guy in New York that always wins it. What's his name again? Aaron judge. No, Aaron judge is one of them though. That's the other guy. It's, it's the honky. The guy who at, at the uh, the driving range, one of those enclosed driving ranges, hit the ball so far it went over oh, the fence. Oh, are you fence. talking to uh, – it's not for the – Mike, Mike Trout. Mike Trout, yeah. there you go. Yeah, that's Angels. But he – um Is it yeah. with the Angels? Well, yeah. With the Yankees. No. No, he's been uh, – unfortunately, he's been stuck with that organization for his entire career and it's terrible really? and he should leave he should go you know what you're you're it's wishful thinking he should go somewhere else like the yankees to try to win a world series but here's the problem well first of all the home run d- derby they've tried to tweak it and fix it but i guess it took i did not watch it last night because i can't watch it but i get <laughs> i guess it took around three hours again which is ridiculous oh. and their other problem is a lot of star players now because it's taxing like it's a pain in the ass don't want to do it so they won't right. participate so they're like taking the second tier and then the last thing is how long have we been doing the anthem at the derby and as i tweeted last night with no political prejudice here 
why are we singing the anthem before an exhibition event? Like we should be expediting that thing. It's not a game. Get it over with. Everyone wants to go get drunk. Like there's parties after that. No, it's a very good point. Yeah, why do they do the national anthem? I don't know. Very weird. Uh, probably just because it's baseball, and I feel like yeah. it's a very American sport, and so you almost have to. Because if you didn't, I'm sure there'd be a protests of why aren't you playing the national anthem? Yeah. And for a but for an exhibition event like that, like they'll do it tonight, which is you know which is fine. That's how they ordinarily do it. Like I've got no problem. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it before a game. That's a whole. That's a different discussion. Mm -hmm. But I'm just. I was shocked that they bother with it before an exhibition event that that they do not need to drag out. I have a question. How many people show up for that? Do, do they pack the stadium for it? or? Yeah, I think they do pretty well. They do? Yeah, I, I don't know if they pack it still, but um, and, and it used to be a novelty for a long time. It, in fact, the first one all the first one ever, now without, it was not in prime time, it was during the day, and it was, it was a lot quicker, was uh, here in 85 at the Metrodome. I think Brunanski oh, okay. won it. Brunanski did? I think, yeah, I think Tom Bernanski won it. God, is he still the president of the High Hate Tom Bernard fan club? I thought that was Gladden. Well, all Gladden's are right up there at the top, too. Yeah, he's up there, too. Like, who's the president of this thing? I don't know. It's some dummy. You got to be stupid to get in. So, you know, it's, that's the whole deal. How Ooh. could, Br I've never, but I don't get how Bernanski hated you when you were buddies with Herbeck and he and Bernanski were tight. I know they were. Well, I, again, Timmy Laudner was a friend. Johnny Castino and I were really, really good friends. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It was about those. Well, you know, they, they weren't that good. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Well, I mean, Bern <laughs> and Judd Berdansky took second at that home run derby, and something called Dave Parker from Cincinnati took first. Well, Dave oh, Parker. Dave Parker won it. Oh, I love Dave Parker. Yeah, he was good. He was a legend. Good question. Yeah, most. Oh, you know, the other guy who really couldn't stand me was Al Newman. And I said, well, you know, you got to you can come like halfway because you're a part time player anyway. <laughs> yeah, you've told that story before. I think I know why why he didn't because of what you told us didn't like you. That that one makes more sense. But Brunans Brunansky, well, didn't you insult him on the air a bunch and stuff? And he was a utility player. And but I mean, Brunansky, worthless. Brunansky should have loved you. Oh uh, no, he yeah, I, I don't know what it was with him. He just he never cared. You know, Timmy Laudner and I played a lot of, like I said, I don't play golf with Laudner anymore. I don't like anybody hitting it three times farther than I can. You know, it's one of those deals. But, you know, got I still love they, they when they did the Tom Bernard night when I got fired at KQ. They, they At the Twins game, they did Tom Bernard night, and I threw out the first pitch. It basically ended up in the uh, first base dugout, if you know what I'm saying. To this day, I got the baseball at my house. Nice pitch <laughs> signed by Cantor Rebecca. I will never get rid of that. It's going to be wonderful. So that was at the Metrodome when? What year? Oh, no, no, it was just uh, two years ago. It was at uh, the current stadium. Oh, at Target Field, yeah. they, they did. I, how, they did, yeah. How did I miss that with all the games I go to? I don't know. A lot of people were there, too. It was very, very nice, and people actually were nice to me. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, it was see, unbelievable. I'm the jerk because I, I wasn't there. But I will tell you, honest to God, Ken Herbeck is one of those kind of guys. When he came up to the to the suite they gave us, uh, my neighbors were all there and friends and all that stuff. Yeah, Herbeck came up and spent a ton of time with him. You know, busted his ass. Very, very nice about that. Herbeck's a great guy. Yeah, unless you give him the finger on the on the street, and then he has to come over and sock you in the mush. Herbeck is. Happen? I don't know. I think he did. He did it. Yeah. I get, and then somebody said, why'd you sock him? And he said, oh, life's a bitch. <laughs> Which I thought was very funny. I've never heard that story, but I totally buy it. I would not want to be punched by Ken Herbeck. He's a very large man. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, he strikes me. Ken strikes me as a guy who uh, the, has the old gruff, gruff exterior, but seems like a really decent guy. You know, I got to get, I got to talk to him because this year, because Pat Eberts unfortunately died just before the season started. That's why Kent's not on this year because they couldn't manage to put the whole thing together with Killebrew and all that. But we got to get him back next year. He's too good to not be on every week during the baseball season. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and plus your buddies. Yeah, he is a good guy. There's no question about it. Really, really good guy. I still love the fact that on 
Halloween night, we played golf out at uh, what the hell's the name of that place that, that Arnold? Uh, no, oh god, I, I used to be a member there and I can't remember the name of it anymore. It's out there in Bloomington, just off of 169. And uh, what the hell's the name of that? My buddy's the general manager for uh, Christ Highland so. Greens, no, Braemar, no, Dwan Golf Course, no, this is a private golf course. Bear Path and Eden Prairie. Bear Path. Oh, there you go. Bear Path. Is Bear Path. Yeah. What? Oh, I, I've never played there. I don't have that kind of money, but uh, I'll here. DJ. I'll DJ weddings there all the time, and it's a beautiful, beautiful place to hang out. I, I won't say who it is, but there was a weatherman on a local TV station here that built a house out of Bear Path. Mm -hmm. Looks just like the Munster House. It, he. It was. It's so ornate. It looks like it was built by you know, like a vampire. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's a really cool house, but it just, it's like, man, you put a lot of work into that thing. Bunch of twins lived or live out, out there, right? Oh, Didn't, yeah. Vikings, uh, too. Santana. Yeah. Yo Johan lived out there, I think. I believe for... so, yeah. It's a great golf course. I used to be a member there, as a matter of fact. Johnny Castino was one of the guys. He was the guy that got me in there. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice, that's a real nice golf course. One of the that great things. Right. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a really, really good golf course. I should probably get out there and play again one of these days. You know what I mean? Now that I played golf once in the last seven years, or no, it's actually been about four or five times. But you know, it's so funny. At the beginning, it was okay, but the longer it went, my muscles went. You haven't done this in a while. I'm not doing this. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> but what the hell? So I don't care about the home run derby. Yep. I do care about the fact that the Twins need to get off their ass and get back on the field. Uh, that's what Thursday is their first game. Is that right? No, no. The new All Star break goes through Friday. Oh God! So they're gonna—they stay. don't play till again till they play uh, the Brewers on Saturday evening at Target Field. No, you're off now for the old three-day break. So what do they do? Like a two-game set Saturday, Sunday? Is yes, that what they, oh, they do. God, they have to ruin everything. Yes, they do. But Ugh. that's yeah. So instead of the Brewers being here uh, for three, it's two. Plus, there's so there's a goofy thing too. Based on how this is done now, uh, the Brewers and Twins, because they're, they're considered traditional rivals, mm -hmm. they ha they play home and away each year. But if it's not their year to have a three-game series, it's like a two-game set. But what makes no sense is, like, why don't they just find a way to have them play three games a year against each other because they draw? Yeah, you know, like if you started a series here on Friday, wouldn't wouldn't that be fun? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Brewers fans come here because it's an easy drive. Yeah, you know, but instead they have, as you just so eloquently put it, ruined everything. And the All Star break is now. I think it's five days off, Tom. Five days off. Jesus, what do they think they're in management? Um. Well, <laughs> that's a. That's a question no comment management for us i love so oh, I, just, yes. I don't know what you're talking about hubbard management is fantastic it's, i don't know. I have any idea what i never mentioned no. hubbard in my management rip i don't remember ever bringing it up i just want to make it very clear i'm a big fan of our management in particular i'm gonna call Ginny today and go did you hear those guys go after you this morning on my show <laughs> judd went after her i i heard i heard he aj went. actually he started it. It was aj's fault it's all aj's fault so okay so we got the all-star game which i don't care about either i've never cared about the all-star game even when i was a little kid really it's, just, it's a fake game who cares i loved it as a kid i totally agree with you now yeah i just so to take five days, why are they taking five days off? That drives me nuts. Well, and if you if you don't make the All Star team, which I think a lot of guys probably pray for now, it's a great deal because yeah, you basically go on vacation. Yeah, for an almost a week. Yeah, so you take your family, or if you're single, go go to Cancun and go drink on the beach. Yeah, yeah, it's a long break now. Yeah, it certainly is, unfortunately. I don't get any baseball for another week, basically. What the hell? Yep, and the Vikings don't start until they, they actually report the rookies report on Sunday, and then a week from today, next Tuesday, the veterans report. And then it'll be we, – we still don't – I don't – I have not seen it, at least this morning, clarification on what exactly took place. So Jordan Addison, the receiver, got mm -hmm. 
arrested for uh, suspicion of DWI because he was, if you heard this one, he fell asleep in his Rolls Royce blocking a lane. That's correct. Right by LAX, which I would consider to be extremely dangerous. God, I did that with my Rolls Royce one time, and, you know, I woke up, luckily. <laughs> Jesus. I just took a nap. He fell asleep. Well, Rolls, you ever ridden in a Rolls Royce? I don't think I have. They are very comfortable. I will right. tell you that. Well, I'm surprised that he was driving it because those are known to be passenger vehicles, like you're yeah, saying, very true. comfortable, where you're rich enough to hire somebody to drive your car around for you while you sit in the back. I remember Andy rode in one one time, and he said, this back seat is better than the couch at home. <laughs> <laughs> well, aren't those things like $500,000, something like that? Yeah, oh, that's they are. Yeah, see, and that's probably for like a used one from the 70s. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. So, well, okay, so we'll get through the All-Star. I, I don't know. I'm not going to watch the All-Star game. I don't care about the All-Star game. I just, maybe I'll go hit balls. That's what I'll do. I'll get out in the rain and hit golf balls. Prepare for your return to Bear Path. Return to Bear. I got to get, I wonder if I know anybody that's a member because Johnny Casino doesn't live here anymore. He was another great guy. What a great guy. Great player too, man. That His he career was. being shortened by those back problems is so yep. bad. Is really too bad. Just to really, really, I haven't talked to Johnny. Well, I got to give him a call. I haven't talked to him in a long time, but so what are we supposed to do for the next five days? Just invent our own sport? Um, yeah, I guess so. Pick a ball. I get, so it's when pick a ball time. When I've never played start? Oh, pickleball. You know, I, pickleball. I, I, my wife loves pickleball. She loves playing that thing. Never played again. It. It's not fair. She's, she's thin and five eleven, So she's got all the right stuff for that game. Yeah, exactly. Well, but, but she should enjoy it while, while you sit on your couch and watch TV or something. Or I could just do what I did last night because she went to Orlando because Fawn, my granddaughter had a dance competition. I guess everything, they had a ball. Nice. I get a call. I said uh, from Catherine. Okay, so just remember, our flight lands at seven fifteen. So you know, leave the house probably about quarter two, and then just pick us up, and we'll be good. Uh, we've been delayed. It's now seven forty-five. We've been delayed. It's now eight fifteen. Oh. We've been delayed. It's now nine o'clock. We've been delayed again. Two and a half hour delay. I finally got to bed last night at eleven o'clock. Oh. It was a thrill. Thanks, airlines. Yeah, what is wrong with the airlines? What happened? I have no clue. Uh, they're just It's just nowhere near as functional as it used to be. The the efficiency seems to be... I yeah. mean, it's always been an issue, but yeah, mm -hmm. that and that sucks because then you got to wait. So did, did you at least not leave the house to go pick her up until... No, she kept calling, so I did not leave the house. Okay, good. Uh, we'll I think it was midnight or whatever the hell time oh, it was. So but... We would have saw an article where you fell asleep at MSP airport <laughs> waiting <laughs> yeah, to pick her yeah. up. Oh, I will tell you, though. I get there, honestly, I got there at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock on a Monday night. The traffic was backed up almost back on to 494. Jeez. It took at least a half hour, 45 minutes to get from the end of the line up to the top to pick her up. Why was there so much traffic there last night? I don't get it. I don't know. On a Monday night, you wouldn't think it'd be that busy. Yeah, I wonder if it's one of those things where everybody tries to outsmart everybody else, and they're like, I'm going to fly in on yeah. Monday because it'll be less busy. And then, well, now everybody does it, so it's just as busy as any other day of the week. Best airport in America, you know. That's what they tell me. It was named the best airport in America. Except I saw a story that they are going to, like, by 2040, they're going to put $9 billion in, into it, and they might tear down, like, all of the parking ramps and rebuild new ones and do all this stuff. <laughs> That'd I, be I, convenient. <laughs> I don't know a lot about aviation and airports, blah, 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 but I tweeted, I said, if you're going to do that, wouldn't it make more sense to find a huge plot of land farther out than Bloomington and build a new airport while not redoing this one? Nine billion dollars of work screams to me you should probably start a new project. Yeah, I would think yeah. so. But, well, they just built, well, I shouldn't say just, it was years ago now, but that hotel that nobody uses that's attached to it. Yeah, so Is that not used? Oh, no, I saw a video where they've cut, like, a bunch of the staff being closed, like, the walkway to get over to it. They most did? Days, most days, because, yeah, nobody, <laughs> like, nobody uses that oh, hotel, or at least not as many as they anticipated. So well, I feel like they're already there. too far in. No. Why would you stay there? There's nothing to do there. 
no and especially with the mall of america like two blocks away yeah. where there's nice hotels and plenty of stuff to do yeah i'm not staying at the airport yeah it would have to be if you are traveling through and have a flight the next day or something yeah. mm-hmm. like that's how i D- detroit when, when they built that what's now the delta like airport slash terminal but it's huge they attached a weston and i think it does pretty well but yeah. it's basically people that are you know that fly in at night and then leave the next day i think mm-hmm. that's i didn't realize that was not used that's a problem because uh i drove by that a couple days ago that's a big hotel not to be used yeah, yeah no question about it i'll close with this i've decided and i'm not taking sides in anything like i said i'm very middling and all this stuff now i'm sick to death of the far left woke and the far right conservatives and they just destroying our country. But other than that, maybe they'll learn one of these days because I picked up the newspaper this morning. The first five stories were about somebody getting killed. Five of them. Okay, so maybe we should tighten things up. And if you kill someone, you should have to pay for it. What do you think? But talking about the airlines, I've decided to make up a little badge. And when I, if I walk on an airplane and the, the flight attendant has a badge that says Free Palestine, I'm just going to put this on. It's not true, but I'm going to put it on anyway. This said, I'm a Jew. What do you think? We'll just get a little battle going. Um, if they had a badge that said that on the job, wouldn't they get in a lot of trouble? Or am I wrong about I would about think that? so. I told Josh Arnold to get an I'm a Jew badge, but he hadn't done it yet. <laughs> What's great? Why, you know, if they're going to wear it on one side. I don't know anything about Palestine and Israel. I don't, you know, whatever. They don't get along, those kids, or uh, whatever. But I just, why is it okay to do one side but not the other? I just don't understand well, that. That's, that's a heck of a way to close, Tom, because I have no idea. That's what if, a. What if I go to Chris Eggert and he doesn't show up because I just said I'm a Jew on a badge? What do you think? He's logging out right now. He's logging out as we speak. He's thinking to himself, what is this segment going to be like? Yeah, his box just disappeared. I think he uh, might have lost it. <laughs> All right, Judd. Well, we'll talk to you tomorrow, Buster. Sounds good. Yeah, we'll talk about the All-Star game. No, I want you to wear a badge. You can put whatever you want on it. Or we'll break down the national anthem. How about that? (laughs) He just moves on. That was very professional. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you very much. I try. Once in a while. (laughs) See you guys. Bye. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, take a break. Channel 5's Chris Eckert brought to you by Mr. Bunny Talk, Josh Allen. Coming up next. I'm here talking with my friends Michael Bilski and Brad Huckle of North American Banking Company. Guys, it seems like banking has changed quite a bit since you first opened your doors in 1998. Yes and no. In 98, we didn't have online and mobile banking like we do today. Many banking processes have also changed. One thing that hasn't changed is we still provide a true community bank experience right here in the Twin Cities. Our team takes the time to get to know our customers and their goals. This creates a relationship that is unique in banking today and one our customers appreciate. It's why we like to say we provide a better banking experience. You're absolutely right, Brad. I've been a customer for a long time. The service your team provides is phenomenal. Thanks, Tommy. So why not bank with my banker, North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really, all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low-interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. 
Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. Channel 5's Chris Egger brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation, 952-925-5608. Mr. Eggert, what's the latest? Hey, good morning. How's everybody? Marvelous. Ben, I heard you talking about going out to the airport, Tom. Uh, there's a bunch of road construction out there. and so. Oh, my God, it was horrible. Hey, Hannah. Yes. Are you busy? What's going on at the airport? Tom was uh, going out to pick up Catherine last night. and Was it Terminal 1 or Terminal 2? It was Terminal 2, and it took an hour to get from the freeway to the front of the the uh, airport. Well, an um, hour. Not to put you on the spot. Well, no, no, no. It's so, it's so frustrating. I, part of it, part of 494, like... Uh, Ridgefield, Bloomington, mm-hmm. leaving up the airport. They're adding an easy pass lane. Yep. There's a lot of construction. And then the other side of 494, the eastern side, uh, they're just doing bridge repairs. So it's like all of that. And uh, a lot yeah. of it won't get done till like November 1st. If, at, oh. if early. I mean, for this construction season. So all the way up until winter. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, I no, no. It. He it's was talking so about it earlier. Frustrating. So. It is so annoying. Even go, where, cause where do you go? Where do you come from? Um, why is that a, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, it's that's all fun. the way down 494. Why don't you just buy a helicopter and fly her direct? Exactly. Let's just land do. on the top of one of them buildings down there. And why is that a, yeah, that works for me. I, we like it cause you can walk up and down Lake street and there are great restaurants. And we, that the, the oh, view that. there, the view there is unbelievable. You know, what are you going to do? Keep living in Wyzetta. It's beautiful. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I do. I think I've lived in every, maybe every suburb now in the entire Twin Cities. I've pretty much lived in all of them now. So it all works out in the end. So Hannah, what have you been up to? I don't know. Just summer, summer life, getting outside, got a new house. You got the new, you got the TV spot running that tells everybody how cool you are. I didn't know that. Was Isn't that a nice thing. promo? I, 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 I every I time it comes on, I'm like, oh, much. Hannah. So oh, know. Hannah's good at promo. And then my, they run my promo, and all I do is bitch the whole time on it. <laughs> no, you have a good promo. That's a good one. Is it a good promo? I, I haven't seen it, so I, I wouldn't know. It all works out in the end. It all does. Hey, could you do me a favor? The next time, like every day when you're on the air, just could you begin and in the middle say it, and then at the end say, listen to Tom Bernard show. Could you just do that from now on? Yeah, while you're stuck in traffic, <laughs> tune into the Tom Bernard show. I should. I should. Better no start problem. throwing some scratch over her way <laughs> over here, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Endorsements ain't me. cheap. It's not cheap. I'll be your agent. I, I understand. Can for a price, but it's it's not cheap. <laughs> well, it's wonderful to see you again. You have a nice family. I see them on TV. Oh, thank you. Thank Very you, guys. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hannah, I, I just remember you. I was out at Terminal Two this weekend too, and it was bad. So oh, I thought I, since Hannah was uh, sitting right there, I thought I would, uh, you know, thank you, Hannah. Hannah's as good as it gets, no question. Mm-hmm. Very nice. So what's and uh, what's new on your agenda? Any big news? I, I mean, I don't know. There were seventeen thousand murders in the. Yeah, the- there was like a one person killed and five people shot in South yeah. Minneapolis on Franklin. Uh, there was also, uh, this is not good. And this is just cause I know what I know about things. Um, somebody got, a got their legs pinned between a light rail train and the I platform. Heard I heard that. Oh. Yep. That's, that's how a lot of people become a member of my club. If it's got something to do with like rail or from my club, <laughs> I just, I don't know what happened. Um, makes me sick though. Thinking about that too, because that ain't, that's. So yeah, um, let's see what what, what those 
are two of the more awful things I could uh, come up with. Thank um, you. The storm damage, uh, Excel Energy is starting to make a dent in that pretty considerably yesterday. I think when we started the day yesterday morning, there were somewhere around 25, 30,000 people who still didn't have lights. Man. Uh, at last check this morning, around 6,000. And at one point over the weekend after those storms came through Saturday night, I think it was like 135,000 people without power. So to be down to 6,000 still sucks if you're one of the 6,000 and yeah. doesn't have your power yeah. on, but uh, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're chipping away. So is that in the Hopkins area? A lot of Minneapolis. A lot um, of Minneapolis. Okay. Not, not a lot of East side, but some, but yeah. a lot of like Minneapolis West. I know um, one of my buddies in Minnetonka lost a tree. I helped him go out to the, take the brush out to the brush pile yesterday morning and it was packed. There were like dozens of cars in there with oh, yeah. and stuff. So that's the weather's so bizarre, man. It's either hotter than hell or this morning. It was a little cool on, I, I went for my walk. Yeah. This morning. It was a little cool this morning. Well, the is, humidity, the, the humidity blew out. The uh, yeah. a, a front came in from Canada and brought some nice, you know, refreshing, Oh, that nice refreshing Canada air, you know, the Canadian air. There's no question. That Irish. <laughs> oh, the Irish spring. Irish. Canadian spring. So oh, Canadian spring. Don't you know? <laughs> Top of the morning to you. Oh God. That's all it's I got. Still, all right, young man. We will talk to you tomorrow. All right. I'll work on my accent. I'll come back tomorrow. All right. Work on your accent. Oh, a little bit. Shiver me timbers or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Bye. Channel 5's Chris Haggard is brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation at 952-925-5608. That was very nice. I handed a pop in with Mr. Eggert. Mr. Eggert right up front with it all after losing a pin himself. Mm -hmm. Is that guy going to lose both his legs? The guy who got pinned between the the wall and the train or whatever it was? Yeah, I would assume so, depending on how bad it is. If it was like Ouch. the actual light rail that like ran over parts of his legs probably oh, gosh how did he get there i don't know either slipped fell maybe i mean if it was pushed i feel like that would be part of the story but yeah i don't know how you get pinned between the light rail at the station i guess it depends on what station it was too that had to hurt yeah, yeah. or did they, they didn't say which station it was uh not that i heard all right, we'll take a break. Be right back in a couple of minutes. Cover a little what, what's going on in the news coming up next. Mike Lindell and my fellow employees want to thank my listeners for all your continued support. Thank you. They're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever. When you use promo code Tom, you get free shipping on your entire order. You get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six pack towel sets for only $29.98 and take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses and mattress toppers. 100% made in the USA, on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM and you can get free shipping on your entire order. So... Call 800-516-5146. Go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw & Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my friend. On your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw Bryant. 
I'm here talking with my friends Michael Bilski and Brad Huckle of North American Banking Company. Guys, it seems like banking has changed quite a bit since you first opened your doors in 1998. Yes and no. In 98, we didn't have online and mobile banking like we do today. Many banking processes have also changed. One thing that hasn't changed is we still provide a true community bank experience right here in the Twin Cities. Our team takes the time to get to know our customers and their goals. This creates a relationship that is unique in banking today and one our customers appreciate. It's why we like to say we provide a better banking experience. You're absolutely right, Brad. I've been a customer for a long time. The service your team provides is phenomenal. Thanks, Tommy. So why not bank with my banker, North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. All right, my job has gotten a lot harder because I looked, tried to look for a positive story in the news. Good luck. No chance. We got nothing. No. Uh, Festival Ahoy, a dozen things to know about St. Paul's Minnesota Yacht Club. What does that mean? Uh, there is, there's a yacht club. I is this the same yacht club that is doing like a? They're doing a concert series here later yes. this summer. Yeah. Okay. Where that's in St. Paul. Yeah, and I think it's called the Yacht Club, but it's not. It's just like I think it's just near a lake. I don't think it's like you have to have a yacht to like show mm-hmm. up. And do they anything. just call it Yacht Club. Yeah. Because I know my parents bought tickets, and we don't own a yacht you don't have a secret yacht <laughs> and, unless they're hiding a lot of stuff from me that i don't know about i know my family does not have a yacht so what makes a boat a yacht i don't even i have no idea i feel like mm-hmm. if it has bedrooms on it yeah that, that's then probably that, true, that classifies yeah. as is a yacht. houseboat a yacht though <clears throat> oh yeah. yeah then a houseboat would be a yacht that's true you think uh, i've or, seen some no offense pretty crappy houseboats so maybe it's just a bad yacht a crappy yacht by the way, pre- predicted on this show, it wasn't the exact charges we were talking about. And I still think they'll overturn that too. But they threw out one of Trump's uh, cases yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I just, how can you go after a guy who took a bullet to the ear, almost to the noggin, almost killed him? You, you can't be harsh to the guy, at least for a little while, unless, of course, you're a disc jockey and doesn't have a job anymore or whatever, something like that. But yeah, I I just, don't you think that it'll be a situation where I'm hoping this Biden-Trump thing just becomes a contest instead of bitching and pissing and moaning nonstop? Aren't you sick of that anyway from both of them? Yeah, I feel like I almost would rather have the charges stick because then it's like, otherwise, like, what do we just do for the past two years Mm -hmm. of going back and forth with all of this? Either do it right or don't do it at all. Like what is like, it's all just a joke now at this point. And well, the, it is a joke. And this is why I'm not a lawyer or mm-hmm. like in legal stuff, but I am, it appalls me how slow the legal process it is, is very God. slow. <clears throat> like you can have something where it's like, okay, we're finally getting around to this, this case on something that he was originally indicted and accused about in 2018. I like, know. Why are we taking six years to gather? Frankly, no offense. If you can't do it in six years, it probably he probably didn't do it. Like, <laughs> right. yeah. And then it's like, okay, hey, we decided it's he's guilty, but check back in four months when we finally decide whether or not he's going to just do it. Look, we can get this done in a week. Right. You would Let's think done in a week. Like I've I've seen my cousin Vinny. Joe Pesci is in the boardroom <laughs> oh, every day. God. Like. Obviously, it's not the right thing. What's that woman's that. name? She's terrific in that movie. Marissa Tomei. Oh, yeah. She's phenomenal. She won Best, Actri- a- uh, best Actress for that role. Best Asshole? Really? Yeah. Well, that, was- <laughs> well, that's a diff- that was a different movie. but <laughs> That's a different movie. Now, she, where did she go? All of a sudden, I don't see her anymore. Uh, let's She's see She's been here. in some stuff, I feel She's like. She's very good. I, I always oh, liked her. Yeah. She, wasn't she Aunt May recently in like the Spider-Man? Marvel? Yeah, she was in Spider-Man No Way Home. She oh, was okay. in The Wrestler. Back in 2008, she's in Upgraded, which looks like it came out or is coming out here in 2024. So yeah, she's been she's been around a little bit. I have to ask you a question: Are movies as good as they used to be? Ooh. Yes. Are they the good ones? <laughs> yes, but the problem is there's so many bad ones that I feel like. You, oh, okay. Because mm-hmm. it's more accessible now. You can't just like everybody can make a movie. Like you yep. can pull your phone out, 
record a bunch of stuff, you know, shoot like two hours of stuff, edit it together. And it can be really bad, but technically it's a movie. Yeah. It's a lot like music where like we're now exposed to so much different types of music and so many different types of movies where it gets watered down. But like, you yeah, said, AJ, the good ones I think are still really good. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. We just, you know, obviously we're in the middle of a move and all that stuff. So we set up the new TVs and I just, I was scrolling through and, I don't know. I so so you guys do have the opinion the good ones are good and there're not that many of them and most movies are just not very good. Yeah, like the the ones that you see nominate like for instance, I think if you took the last 5 like best pictures, like mm-hmm. the best movies of the year and you compared them to like 50 years ago, I would think based on just acting ability and overall like techniques and everything like that not that the story is necessarily better but just overall production wise mm-hmm. it, it oh yeah it better for yeah. that because i yep. think the originality of a lot of the ideas and that's this is why we see like gladiator 2 or you know all of the so many sequels now or yeah. like, or like reboots yeah. and like remakes that's one issue but when it comes to like originality that i think you know movies from the 60s 70s 80s 90s they definitely take the cake there yeah I mean, I just, I looked for, because Catherine was out of town for five days, so I was looking for movies to watch and all that, and I found mm-hmm. a couple, but they're not as easy to find as you would think. I mean, with all the accessibility you have now, you would think it'd be even easier to find them, but a lot of stuff is just, it just doesn't appeal to me anymore. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. There are some great movies, don't get me wrong, but not a ton. I wouldn't say a ton of them. No, and what I've noticed, too, is like a lot of lower budget maybe independent films will see a big budget film and go, Oh, I can make something that's like that, but less expensive yeah. and it should still work. And so you'll get like knockoffs of whatever blockbuster movies. And you're like, okay, these are all just repackaged and repurposed and lesser quality. I guess. So I just, uh, I hope we do get back at it. And and I suppose maybe as, as you, you know, go through life, you don't, I mean, every, everything's new. You're a teenager. You go to the movies, and everything is brand new to you. Mm-hmm. So I guess it all appeals to you. And by by, you know, a certain age, you just go, eh, whatever. Right. And when you go, <clears throat> oh, this movie reminds me of this movie that I saw back yeah. in the day. I probably know what happens. You want, yeah, like you're saying, something fresh. Yeah. I would think so. Uh, I would imagine that's probably true. I, I just, I'm just looking for stuff. Well, she's back now, so I don't have to worry about it. It all works out in the end. <laughs> you know, it's so great. Is when because Jude stayed at Andy's house for four days, mm-hmm. so then I took Jude home yesterday, and he was very sweet and sat next to me on the couch, and he was very very nice and just really enjoyable. We picked Catherine up at the airport last night. I thought we we're going to have to call an ambulance for the son. He went berserk when he saw her because he hadn't seen her in five days. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, he lost his mind. What is, I mean, is it because she feeds him? Is that what it's all about? Yes. He's absolutely. the one with the chow. You're chopped liver. <laughs> exactly. He's like, I've been starved for the past three days. I need yeah. you back. She is the main purpose why he is alive and mm-hmm. on this earth. Yeah. He's no. Gonna, he's going to pay that back. To no doubt about it. Honestly, God, he, I thought he was going to have a damn heart attack for Christ. Like, <laughs> I was like, Jesus, will you count? Well, he's coming in today. You could bitch at him today, probably. Well, even yeah, I, yesterday when Andy brought him in, he was just over on the couch, just like I thought she was going to be here. Yeah, yeah. you can definitely <laughs> really upset. <laughs> he came <laughs> sprinting in, said oh, yeah. hi to Tom, and then like went over by her chair. Oh, she's not here today. Yeah, just like oh. this is bullshit. Then I'll go lay on the couch and mope. I lied to. <laughs> Honest to God, he because he was looking out. He was on my lap looking out because I was parked in from you know the, the ramp to pick her up. Uh-huh. And he was on my lap looking out the driver's side window. Mm-hmm. So he didn't even know she was coming until she opened the back door to put her suitcase in the car. Once that noise, it was like his head went, it was like whipped it. <laughs> what was that? Oh, my God. He just literally went berserk for about 10 minutes. And it's all the food, isn't it? It's all about yeah. chow. Yeah. yeah, probably. Would she more... Or I suppose because when you first got him and you're on radio all the time, she probably he probably spent more time with her in the morning. Oh, God, some yeah. girls a oh, little absolutely. bit more attached. That's probably got something to do with it. No question about it. There's a, there's no doubt about it. It just it was fun to watch, actually. It's great having Catherine back at home. Although I think she was a little tired because I went to kiss her goodnight and she missed. 
I was like, what the hell? When you go to bed, you get some sleep. Don't you think? <laughs> she just snoring as you lean in. For <laughs> exactly. Oh, I got to kiss you. Okay, I suppose. Whatever. Whatever works. We have to take a break. We'll be right back in a couple of minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Josh Arnold will join us just a couple of minutes from now. When you go to a restaurant, you expect a chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment but advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really, all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low-interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. Mike Lindell and my fellow employees want to thank my listeners for all your continued support. To thank you, they're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever. When you use promo code TOM, you get free shipping on your entire order. You get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six-pack towel sets for only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses and mattress toppers. 100% made in the USA on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM, and you can get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146. Go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 930, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app, at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't you forget it. That's all I have to say. Let me know when Josh is ready to go. Oh, he's good. He's ready. Good to go now. When isn't he ready to go? That's true. Did you hear my tip for you this morning, Josh? Did you hear it earlier? No, I did not hear your tip tip, tip this morning. What's my tip? Your tip. I'm gonna, we're going to do this. I think that if if people are going to wear free Palestine uh, badges, you should wear a badge that just says, I'm a Jew. What do you think? I think that'd be great. I think it'd, it'd be wonderful. You know, might cause a, a little free, stir up once in a free, while. But. Free, Palest, free Palestine. Yeah, most, of the, most of those people have no idea. Not a clue. They have no idea no, what the hell they're talking about. Free, You're free right. Palestine. What is, please tell me what is Palestine? Yeah, they don't even know what it is, actually. Please tell me what Palestine is. Good move. You're absolutely right. And I don't want I don't wanna I don't wanna use drop the F bomb, but <laughs> they they know. As my grandmother used to say, they know for shit. <laughs> oh God, I remember that. <laughs> they know for shit. You're absolutely right. Okay, I gotta ask you a question because I thought okay. of you immediately because you know you're my guy. So Trump nearly gets assassinated. The uh, thing luckily catches him just in the ear, doesn't kill him. But the stock market went berserk the next day, didn't it? Well, that was he got that was he got hit on Saturday. You know, on Saturday, yes, yeah, so it was Monday. Uh, okay. I went. I went to see Bill Maher Saturday night. Oh, that's Annie right. And I went to see Bill Bill Maher. Yep. 
Um, Bill Maher called Trump the luckiest guy on the face of the planet. I would agree with that. It missed by about a quarter inch killing him. Correct. Um, unfortunately, you know, it hit a, uh, a former fire chief who yep. was protecting his family yep. uh, and two other people. So there had to be more than one shot um, done. Uh, the shooter was killed and um, Mar, Mar said the election is over. Oh, he thinks he's just, Trump automatically that. wins. That pop, it's uh, probably but, true. But the, the market, the market went up on the belief that uh, Trump has stands a better chance right now of winning than does Biden. Um, and if Trump were to win, that would mean lower regulations, lower taxes. Uh, more um, investment banking, more mergers and acquisitions, uh, a better, uh, we'll say a better set of circumstances for Silicon Valley. Mm, yeah. Um, we'll say less banking regulation, which would open up uh, banks to lend money to uh businesses small and large that could also help uh homeowners um so the, the market looked very positively at uh at trump basing on well the economy did pretty well under under trump the stock market did pretty well under under Trump, and the only concern uh, would be the tariff issue mm -hmm. uh, with with China. Oh, the oil market. Now, this is very very interesting. Um, you know, people believe well, he's going to be pushing for more drilling. So, drill baby, drill. <laughs> and yes. Um, here's something else that happened under under Trump. We had drill baby drill. The price of oil went down, and the U.S. became a net exporter of oil and a net exporter of uh, liquid liquefied natural gas. Mm -hmm. uh, the current uh, current administration uh, is trying to squelch drilling for oil, although oil drilling is still up. And they've also put, uh, I'm not going to say a complete kibosh on exporting liquefied natural gas, but they have put a, uh, we'll say a moratorium almost on exporting liquefied natural gas. Um, that, <laughs> that's not so good, but in any case, if it's drill baby drill, that could bring down the price of um, of oil, which means the price of gasoline comes down, which means that you and I have more money to spend, and inflation could probably come down a little bit. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, in terms of inflation, there are uh, a lot of economists saying, well, Trump is because of the cuts in taxes, uh, that's going to be bad. That's going to be very inflationary. So the Fed is not going to be able to cut interest rates because inflation will be, uh, will continue to rise. And government will also continue to spend money. Well, I have to say, I really don't know that. Because under Trump, inflation uh, was still quite low, uh, and inflation stayed low until uh, we hit, what was that, the government-mandated 
uh, shutdown slash recession that happened in March of 2020 when the government said, yep, we got to, we got to close everything except a few, uh, a few places because of COVID. And the idea was to close everything down because that would stop the spread of COVID. Uh, and you know, if we're going to close everything down, we better make sure that there's plenty of money available so that uh, people aren't on bread lines. Yeah. So the government spent a lot of money, shut everything down, and then when things opened up uh, a year later, there was huge demand for product, not enough service or yeah, not enough product available, pushing push prices up. And then in addition to that, we had a tremendous spending package uh, that got uh, pushed, pushed through. So I can't blame inflation on, uh, we'll say on Biden and the current administration. And so we'll leave it, leave it at that. But anyway, that's why the market took off. Yeah, see, I, that, that all, you know, let me ask you a question to kind of, kind of go back just a couple of minutes. I have never understood America's position on, you know, the gas and all the rest of it, and, you know, all of it. Um, the focus being on America, and, we're, and we've gotten a lot better, which is a good thing. We want to have a nice, clean environment, but we do nothing but praise the Eastern Hemisphere and they pollute seven times to 50 times more than America does. They pollute the hell out of the ocean, and that never comes up. Why is that? Well, we're just concerned about ourselves. That's what it is. We're just, it's more, yeah, but I mean, they're poisoning the planet, and we don't even talk about it. No, it, we're not talking about it. We're not talking about what's going on in China or India. Right. The fact that China has continued to, uh, while well, their population is expanding, they're used. They need. Uh, they don't have a lot of, we'll say, gas and oil. They do have a lot of coal, mm -hmm. and with all that uh, coal, um, with all the coal, well, we're going to. We need power. We're going to build coal-fired plants. Yeah, aren't they and building like building, we're building all these coal coal-fired? Uh, um, energy plants, mm -hmm. and guess where that stuff goes? Goes up into the atmosphere, yep. flows across the ocean uh, to to the United States, and that and that doesn't count all the other volcanic activity that has been ongoing that throws a lot of other stuff into the air. Uh, a lot more stuff than my. Uh, I'll say my twin turbos on the uh, 2013 uh, M5. Mm. But no, most of the most of these um, most of these people do not talk about talk about what goes on elsewhere in no. the world. If we do things here in the United States, that'll solve all of the world world's problems. I was almost almost thinking because I had this discussion with with some clients yesterday uh, on golf courses, and if you've noticed around the Twin Cities, uh, all the golf courses over the last several years is at least a lot of the all the golf courses. That's a poor statement. Many of the golf courses, and particularly many of the Older private courses have been knocking down trees that are 50 to 100 years old right. and plus to, quote unquote, return the courses to their original uh, design. Right. But most of the courses were built on farm fields. And we have to just knock down all these trees, and the trees do what, Tom? They uh, absorb they, our 
are bad breath, basically, is what they do. Right, and they give off plenty of oxygen. Uh, oxygen, yep. Yeah, so I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. All you, all you characters, <laughs> here, you're creating even more pollution like this by cutting down all these old trees. Yep. I mean, it might, might be one thing if the trees were diseased and or, or dying, but a lot of them are not. Why are you doing this? Well, we want a different type of grass on our greens. We want to widen the fairways and make it, well, it's probably, we want to make it easier for our maintenance people to cut the grass. Mm -hmm. And maybe some of the players, you know, are having a, you know, don't want to get lost in the woods. So we want to speed up play. So we'll get rid of all these trees. So then at uh, my course, what do we do? Oh, well, we've got to make the course a little tougher, so we're going to grow native grasses where there were, were once trees. And if somebody loses the ball in there, is that, uh, and they're looking in the native grasses for their ball. Yeah. Does that speed up or slow down play? <laughs> there we go. I love how we oh, went from pollution God. to you're pissing me off, you're taking too long to play nine. I like oh, it. Yeah. Play, play. It's taking longer to play. They're creating more pollution by what they what they did, and it ends up costing uh, the members more money. Uh, huh? It's uh, true. As they say, no sakel. No sakel. We will see you on Friday on the Family Show, Pally. Well, yes. Yeah, so, so real quick, it's earnings week. Oh yeah. Uh, bank banks have been producing. Uh, Earnings United uh, United Health, which is not a bank, uh, did a little bit uh, better than expected, but they still have some reputational risks because of a major hack that happened uh, earlier this year to their change healthcare. Uh, Amazon opens their Prime Day today, which should be pretty pretty good, and New Balance shoes is cutting a deal with the WNBA uh, because they want to get more involved in women's sports. Mm -hmm. Right. Good for those kids, don't you think? I think so. There you go. All right, I Pally. think so. We'll see you on Friday. Looking forward to it, Josh. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Tom. Josh Arnold, ladies and gentlemen. And he does have a point that we do a lot of things that make things worse just because we think it looks better. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. And the Eastern Hemisphere pollutes the hell out of our oceans, and they don't seem to care about that. They only care about what we do. No. Well, that's a globe here. We're going to have to all work together. It's not going to work. Correct? Correct. We shall take a break. Be right back. Kristen Burt will come on to argue with me about everything. Be right back. I've been tracking the weather in Minnesota for a long time. I'm 5 Eyewitness News Chief Meteorologist Ken Barlow. And in the morning, I've got to be right because my forecast affects your family's entire day. And in the evening, you can count on my friend, Ren. That's right, Ken. I'm 5 Eyewitness News Evening Meteorologist Ren Claire. And as a Minnesotan, I know our weather can be tricky. Throughout the day and into the night, I've got you covered with an accurate forecast to help keep your family safe and ready for any weather. And don't forget, no matter how things change or what time of day, you'll always get our forecast first at the start of every newscast on 5 Eyewitness News. Start your day with me, Ken Barlow. And wrap up your day with me, Ren Claire. Because 5 Eyewitness News is always tracking our weather. So you're always alerted first. It's why 5 Eyewitness News is Minnesota's weather authority. When you need someone to listen, a lawyer you know and trust. If you've never been in an auto accident, it's hard to know what to expect from the insurance adjuster. Here are some tips. One, if they talk to you about whether or not you should hire a lawyer, it's a good sign that you probably should. Two, it's illegal for them to give you any legal advice. They aren't lawyers and they aren't licensed to practice law. Three, if they tell you that everyone involved in the accident is at fault, they're wrong. 
This comes from the belief that you're at fault for just being on the road. That's nonsense and not supported by any law. Finally, remember that friendly adjusters are often just gaining information. They want you to do most of the talking so they can file their report. I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. I hope you're never injured in a collision. But if you are, don't sign anything until you've talked to us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. I hosted my show on the radio for 40 years. Now I host the Tom Bernard podcast. And I'll tell you, I've never seen the passion and engagement from our audience as I do now. I know we also have businesses that listen to our podcast and it got me thinking, wouldn't it be great to help those businesses grow by telling my listeners about them? So here's the deal. If you own or handle marketing for a business, would like to have my audience buy your product or service, visit TomBernardShow.com, keyword partner, and we'll put together an ad campaign to help your business. That's TomBernardShow.com, keyword partner, and thank you for listening. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Kristen Burt Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to NABankco.com to learn more. Member FDIC equal housing lender. What's up? Oh, look at this smile. What's this all about? It's just a good morning smile. Should I be just grumpy? <laughs> oh, damn it. No, you have to be in management then. <laughs> Arts, come on. You're a disaster. You're a disaster. There's no doubt about it. So what's new in the world? Uh, let's talk a little Minneapolis with Prince. Okay. They are fighting with Netflix. I think this is really interesting. So Ezra Edelman, he is a documentary director. He did OJ Made in America. A lot of people probably remember that documentary. Yep. He was given the task by Netflix and Prince's estate to create a docu-series. I would call it docu-series versus a documentary um, for Netflix about his life. They've been working on it for six years. So it's been going on and on and on. And um, the agreement was that it would be six hours. Well, he has delivered his final product. It is nine hours. Uh -oh. Now, Netflix has no problem with this, but mm -hmm. the estate does. Oh. And the complications with uh, Prince's estate, and I'm sure you all heard tons about this after his passing, is that there's two sides to it. There's the side that manages his artist rights, and then there's his family. Mm -hmm. because he died without a will. But collectively, they have to agree in order for any project to move forward. And it's almost impossible to get things to move forward, or they take a very long time. And they say that this is against the agreement, that it was only supposed to be six hours, not nine hours, and that they feel that there are some inaccuracies that's coming from the family side, um, and they want those corrected. But Ezra Edelman says, I am not cutting this. This is my director's cut. Mm -hmm. I've showed it to friends. I've done screenings on my own. This is the product you're getting. So we'll see how this plays out. So what are they saying he did that his family says he didn't do? They didn't specify what the inaccuracies oh, were, okay. but it was based off of his life, obviously. But they said, you know, Prince was incredibly picky when it came to putting out his products. We know he was mm -hmm. a perfectionist and they want to maintain that same uh, little high level now that he's gone. Is this brothers and sisters? Or, I don't even know anything about Prince's family. Yeah. I mean, I think it was fractured too. I think it was like yeah. nieces, like a sibling. It was all over the place. But uh, dying without a will really became a major estate fight for years. Why would he do that? Why would he not leave a will? I mean, it's got to be a lot of money involved here, I would think. I would think so, but I think it's more common than you think that people die without a will. Really? Yes. God. Oh, so yeah, As someone who is dealing with probate in their own families. So uh -oh. I was like, true, yeah. 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 And yeah. I'm saying, especially when it's like Prince wasn't extremely old, like he probably thought he had a lot of years yeah. left to live. So it's probably one of those things where you're like, I'll get to it when I get to it. Yeah, I got some get to it, get to it. Don't do drugs then because you ain't going to live very long. You keep doing drugs. Well, mm -hmm. and you also think that his business managers would have tidied that up because that right. seems, you know, kind of insane when you really do think about it. When someone does have it alone, like you forget about the property or anything else, just his song catalog alone is a valuable part of his estate. Mm -hmm. And you would think that somebody, a manager, a business manager, an attorney would have said, Hey, we got to button this up. 
yeah, it really is too bad that 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 happens so often that nobody knows what to do with any. It just really, you got to make a will. If you got five bucks, you should probably make a will just, to, you know, because what a headache for the family. Yeah. If you own a car, like even just something as simple <laughs> yeah. as that. If you're like, the only yeah. thing I own a value is my car. Well, guess what? You should actually have a will because I'm dealing with very expensive lawyers with a family member <laughs> because of the situation we're in. And, it, you know, it's it's a long it's a long road. It's not simple. So basically, if you get your way, we'll just go. Oh, here's Kristen. Oh, she's not on anymore. She got all the dough. So she quit. I don't think so. I think it's all going to lawyers. <laughs> I don't. Oh, the lawyers are going to get all the money. Who ever Probably. heard of that happening? It's shocking. It really it's shocking. Is shocking but no yeah, doubt no. About. But it is, and it it, you know, and just in in the amount of like stress it causes your family mm -hmm. members, you know, who you leave behind, make a will. <laughs> yep, it's a good idea. There's no question about it. I, I just I don't know. That, that whole Prince thing was just very, you could see it coming. I do, it's, uh, you know, I have said that before. He just wouldn't stop doing some of the things he shouldn't be doing. And it ended up killing him. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and it's so sad because, I mean, he would have probably been, you know, a voice for another yeah. what, 20, 30 years in mm -hmm. music. And we don't have that. And I mean, we lost him and we lost Michael Jackson, who I think yeah. were really such pinnacles in the music industry for so long. And we lost them within a few years of each other. Did those two ever hang out? That'd be an interesting conversation. Prince talking to Michael Jackson. Holy God. You know, it was interesting. If you watch the, we are the world documentary, yeah, you got yep. a little bit of like, yep. there's a little bit of ego going on and that, you know, Prince was shy and everything. And yep. Michael was kind of running the show with Quincy Jones on that. And, I have a feeling that probably played a little bit into it too. Yeah, you're probably right about that. That's, I, I guess it is competition, whatever it, you know, you know, I've never looked at it that way. Uh, you know, just cause somebody is doing their job opposite you, they're all of a sudden like against you or they're mm -hmm. harming you in some way. Well, do the best job you can and you don't have to worry about it. Kristen and Tom, do either of you know, is that part of the reason why Michael Jackson referred to himself as the king of pop? Because king kind of one-ups the prince. Prince, yeah, they're good point. That's a I great mean, point. You know, it's never really been mentioned, but I mean, knowing Michael Jackson, I think he would do it. Because he leaned into the king of pop. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty common when I, every day at you know, 9.15, I have to go, here's the princess of info. Mm -hmm. And then you come on, you know. Yeah. Knock She's not even down. arguing Knock it. She's not even arguing the point. I like no. it. She's the I, queen of the show. The I am, queen. I am the queen. Let me adjust my crown. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you have it. Any good new movies coming out, shows, any stuff? We were just talking about that. And, and I, you know, we just set up the new TVs at our new house and all that stuff and blah, blah, blah. And so you're going through all this stuff. I'm having a hard time finding something to watch. And I don't know why there's 9,000 channels. Well, I'll tell you why this month is going to feel very light, at least in terms of streaming. Okay, good. The Olympics. Oh, Nobody yeah, wants to go true. up against the Olympics. Yep. You do have, the good news is you do have Cobra Kai season six arriving this week it's a good show. on the 18th. It's a great show. Mm -hmm. Now they are stretching this thing out. So yes. what's going to happen is the final season is going to be 15 episodes altogether. You're going to get five episodes this Thursday on Netflix. You're going to get another five episodes on November 24th. Oh my And then God. you're going to get another five episodes in 2025 that has not been announced yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think they understand how binge watching works. <laughs> we need more. Let's go. Uh, some of this, I will say some of this is a result of the writer strike too. So oh, they're yeah. just trying to, you know, they're trying to give you what you want, but at the same time, they're like, we're going to have to stretch this out because we can only do what we've got. So, um, you know, they got put on hiatus, of course, for six months, thanks to the writer strike last year. So those first episodes are why they are popping in on July 18th. July 18th, it, 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 so it is today, huh? Uh, nope, that's no. Thursday, I believe. I mean, Thursday, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, I was like, did it. I, I was like, I've been in a time warp since I went to Chicago, so I'm like, maybe it is the 18th. No, it's today's the 16th, right? 
Yep. Today's yeah, okay. the 16th. Yes, it 16th. is. Yeah. So Thursday, you will see that drop. Um, but yeah, this month is going to be rather light just because they assume, and that's always the assumption, they assume that everyone's going to be watching swimming and gymnastics mm -hmm. and some of the bigger sports. Basketball, of course, will be huge um, over uh, beginning July 26th for the Olympics. Don't bring up the Olympics to me. I'm still suffering from all those years ago. Oh yeah, that's a heartbreaking story. Oh my I still God, I that. went and cut I don't twenty five thirty commercials for McDonald's. It was called Sally Bell. It was about a young girl who was going to run on the Olympics. It was going to be huge. I would have probably you know Elvis shoulder to shoulder. Mm -hmm. I'll build my own mansion. All this stuff. Couple of days before the Olympics, guy goes into a McDonald's in San Diego and kills what seventeen people. The commercials never ran. Oh, what but, year was that? Was that like eighty eight or eighty? That's about right. Yeah, I think eighty four, eighty eight, something like that. I was a kid. I remember though. This was like terrorizing when he went in and did this and there was like a bicycle left outside and the kid was killed like a bicycle was outside. oh yeah Do you yeah. remember that image i don't know and maybe it just like resonated with me because i was a kid and i'm like oh my god you go into mcdonald's and you don't come out we don't you know it's so strange because we have mass shootings so often here in the united states i know schools, but we never reference mcdonald's massacre because that's what it no. was called too it was a McDonald's massacre. Right? Yeah. It absolutely was. Yep. San yeah. Ysidro. San Ysidro. Yep. San it was in California. I don't even remember that. Shot, really? Fatally well, shot 21 people. And 21 wounded, killed. And wounded 19 others before oh, being God. killed by police after 77 minutes of shooting. 77 minutes. Oh, that is so tragic, too. You know, it also makes me think, though, there aren't that many people in McDonald's now. You know what I mean? At, back no, in the right. 80s, you right. would go in a mcdonald's would be wall-to-wall -wall people you'd be mm -hmm. hoping to get a booth you know hoping to get a seat you'd be in line waiting now they really encourage you to get your food and get out of there There's only <laughs> get out. during the pandemic they renovated my mcdonald's that is down the street and i am a frequent mcdonald's user for their coca-cola i love their like co2 fizzy bubbly but they took out most of the seating and, you know, you order off of the, like, large iPad mm -hmm. machine, whatever, and then your food's ready. That's it. That's the deal. Is there is there breakfast? Because I've never, I've always worked in the morning, so I've never had a chance to have, unless somebody brought the breakfast food into the station. Is their breakfast food good? Oh, a sausage, egg, and cheese McGriddle? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Nobody so cooks up a hash brown like McDonald's yep. either. Really? Yeah. I'm going to start having people drop that oh, stuff you're off. You're going to probably have to start taking an extra Livia diet to make sure you can lose all that <laughs> you're weight. Gonna you're gonna gain, but it's it's worth it. You're going to spend five hours a day walking it off. <laughs> yep. Do fast food places do as well as they used to? I don't even know. I don't think so, just with the, some of the trends of dieting. But, I mean, they're still so... It's so convenient for a yeah, lot of people yeah. that, I mean, they're not hurting for money by any stretch. But they're expensive. I think for families, I don't think families are going as regularly where you, it used to be like a, an affordable meal for a lot of families. They're like, wait a minute, all of a sudden this is an $80 meal when I used to go to Chili's for an $80 meal. You know, you, So I think mm -hmm. a lot of people have cut back and I don't think people are going out to restaurants the same way that they used to before the pandemic. Is that part a lot of, of the whole... Yeah, restaurants closing. You got movie theaters closing. You got people just don't do what they used to do. I, I would say in my generation, you know, you go into dinner in a movie. That's what you did. It was wonderful. But and people haven't returned to dinner in a movie, and people's no. habits changed. And you know, when I was in Chicago, I, I was really interesting noticing how busy and full everything looked. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of it is because. It's Chicago. The weather was perfect last week. They had a lot of outdoor dining, a lot of outdoor seating. Where in oh, LA, true. I can do that year round. It's like yeah. that's not special. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that is so interesting. But um, LA really, I think habits completely changed. The nightlife is like, I would die if I were in my 20s right now in Los Angeles because I'd be like, what are we doing to have fun, you guys? Like, what are we doing? Because a lot of the nightlife it has really subsided here. And why is that? 
Um, you know, habits change, the industry change. We weathered mm-hmm. through two strikes last year. So oh, people yeah, don't have true. disposable income. And you have to remember there's two main industries in Los Angeles, Hollywood and tourism. Yeah. And so, you know, tourism obviously was affected during the pandemic, as was production, but they got it up and running within five months or so. But then we got hit with that double strike. That was tough. Yeah, very true. I just got a message on my, I, I like getting messages on my watch. You don't have to pick up your phone or anything like that. Uh, they want to know how, how how's the uh, Walk of Fame doing? Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to talk to the Hubbards. How did that go? We got to start there. No, that's right. Okay, I'll, I'll talk to them about it. Got to start there. And I don't think, and I think if we looked correctly, that nominations don't open until 2025 now. Like they've done their 2024 class. Yeah, I believe it's in July of 2025. So who went this year? Um, I think there was quite a few. Kristen, didn't you have a list? Of, yeah, I had a list. Um, I have to look up some of these because I was like, let's see, 2025 Hollywood Walk of Fame. All right. It looks like some of the new names are Glenn Ballard, Jenny Rivera, Richard Blade, Chris Hemsworth, to name a few. Is that a problem that I've never heard of three of them? Uh, Jenny Rivera was a famous um, Tejano singer that who was killed in a plane crash, and I know this because she lived in my neighborhood and had a. I know, and she had a blow dry bar and like nail salon up the street that I used to go to all the time, and her family sold it. Um. Jessica Chastain, Robert England, you sh- you should know from um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Emilio yep. Estevez. Oh, Colin I like him. Farrell, yeah. At least, uh, let's see, Nia Long. Yeah. Oh, nice. We yeah. got some good people some, on there. Some good names, but we need Tom Bernard in there, right? That's your job, sister. Well, we got we have to go through the whole process, so we have to like yes, fill out the form. I forgot. We got to fill out a form. We do as to why. We would nominate you, and I think it was a two hundred fifty dollar nomination fee as well. So basically, you have to lie. How would I lie? I'm not in the Radio Hall of Fame. You are. No, I'm just saying you. Yes, you did all this and this, and so but you did do up. it. Like that's yeah. the crazy. I I didn't do it. I don't we're deserve gonna, a walk. We're gonna list all of your actual accomplishments, and then at the end, it's just gonna be like, and he rescued like six cats from trees, sure. and you know. What like Absolutely. just a bunch of just ridiculousness afterwards? No well. question about it. I'll really. say that he like rescued London, and now she's like the official mm. radio cat. I mean, she's here right now. Where is she? Let's see London. Hold on, she's on the desk with me. Oh, London! <laughs> it's hot, so she's like laying on the desk. So I understand. <laughs> oh, how, what's the temperature? Um, today it's probably going to be in the nineties. Really? Yeah, it was in the nineties here for like four straight days. Yeah, it was toasty. We've been uh, on. Fire, really. Our fire season started yeah. very early this year, unfortunately. So That's too bad. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I know. And I'm hoping everyone stays safe because it is too early and we stay hot until late October, early November. Yeah. Do the fires ever get close to your neighborhood or not really? They yeah. do. We do. Um, they used to not, and now they do. Uh, because you know, of course, the you know, everything has sort of shifted and changed, but um oftentimes we will get we've been lucky in that we haven't had any um mandatory evacuations but we have had the get ready to evacuate which means Mm -hmm. we really have to be prepared and packed because if they do tell you that you got to go sometimes you only have five minutes to go oh my god i know so during fire season we have like we have a list of like this is what you grab when you have time to pack the car this is what you grab when you have five minutes and need to go and, you know, a lot of that is literally like all the important papers, the cats, the laptop, go get in the car and go. Mm-hmm. So um, but otherwise we have, uh, you know, what we would pack if we had time to get out of the house. That's all you need. And we will talk to you tomorrow. Yes. See you all on Wednesday. Thanks very much. Kristen Bird Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. That's one thing I don't tell her I said this. Okay. But I can tell by looking at her if she slept well or not. Do you notice that? No. I feel like she always has the same glow. She's got a glow. There's no doubt about that. She's a, well, she's a very attractive woman, first of all, but she does have a glow about her. Mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about. So if you had to guess today, did you, did she sleep? She looked a bit tired today. Oh. Yeah. 
okay. and she does this when she's tired too. She keeps pushing her hair back mm. out of her eyes. Yeah. Probably just got done traveling back from Chicago, readjusting to the new time zone. Probably a little difficult. Trying to digest those three pizzas from Pizzeria Uno <laughs> and Due. Yeah. Probably true. We need to tell her if, she, if we're going to get you on the Walk of Fame, she has to come out for the state fair. Oh, a, absolutely. Yeah, fair, fair trade. That's a great call. Are we doing the state fair this year? I believe so. I think we're, we're on that 24th of mm -hmm. August. Saturday, we're doing a we're doing an hour for Hubbard Day. Saturday, I don't work on Saturdays. Forget it. All you're right, out of Devin, the mix. Devin, get out of bed. I'll see you there. <laughs> Devin was there last year. Yep. Oh yeah, last year was fun. Indeed. All right, we will uh, take a break here. That's going to do it for this show. Family show up in about 10-15 minutes. <laughs> 